The wind always blows in Kotzebue, making the Western Alaska hub city a perfect location and testing ground for wind turbines. In fact, Kotzebue was the first location in Alaska and above the Arctic Circle to install a wind farm linked to a diesel-fired power plant. The Inupiat community, located on the Chukchi Sea, around 33 miles above the Arctic Circle, serves as a hub for 10 smaller communities within the Northwest Alaska Native Association, or NANA, region. In the early 1990s, the Kotzebue Electric Association decided to try to harness the energy from the wind. The board of directors and general manager, Brad Reeve, saw the need to try to reduce their diesel consumption. Well, I think for us, uh, costs are very high. We're at the end of the supply chain. And so the goal has always been to reduce diesel gallons by the maximum amount or uh, utilize every gallon we get to the fullest extent. Initially, um, my role was to uh, make believers out of other people because we'd had so many failures kind of in the state that nobody really thought wind could work. When you look at uh, all of the equipment working together and functioning together, it amounts to about a half million gallons of diesel saved. And every dollar that we save for the community here is one that uh, helps build the economy. And <laughs> The wind farm provides around 2.7 megawatts of power to the community of 3,201. When the wind blows and all of the turbines are spinning, the power from the wind has a potential to meet up to 75% of the community's baseload needs. High penetration wind, there used to be an old rule of thumb engineering uh, basis that if you had 25% of your energy coming from wind, that your system would start becoming unstable. Um, we are in a high penetration setting here. We've often been up to run quite frequently at 75%. Um, it's not uh, full uh, diesels off at this point, but uh, definitely high penetration system where uh, we've uh, solved a lot of the integration issues over time. Some of the biggest obstacles in wind energy in Kotzebue have been the permafrost on the Arctic tundra. All our machines are on permafrost. Permafrost is essentially a, it's like a low grade concrete. So if you got it and you can lock your wind turbine or structure into it and not melt it, you've got a pretty good, good footing to work on. We use devices called thermosiphons and they're essentially a device that removes heat from the ground. Shipping is a huge component of a project cost. So a lattice tower is broken into smaller pieces and assembled on site. So that made um, um, installation cost a lot less. The tubular tower is uh, tube shaped and it's, you can crawl up inside it. So there's some benefits in terms of maintenance in that you're out of the elements, you're inside a tube. However, um, you're shipping a pretty large volume and also handling that large volume from a construction, construction perspective, is a little more challenging. The Kotzebue Energy System has been a flexible design that incorporates technologies as they prove themselves, growing and strengthening the utility's renewable energy portfolio. During the design of the community's hospital in the 1990s, engineers left provisions for an alternative heating system. We were able to work with the hospital Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium, Anilk Association, and the Indian Health Service to install a 450 kilowatt electric boiler at the hospital. And whenever we have too much wind power available, instead of not capturing that wind power, capture the power but push it through our distribution system and um, heat up the hospital. KEA provided the um, control system and communications to the boiler. Manila Association, ANTHC, and Indian Health Service procured and installed the boiler. The project has come online and in December of 2015, I believe, and has been pretty successful in terms of reducing the hospital's consumption of heating fuel, um, but also us, Kotzebue Electric, able to um, capture some of that wind that we'd other, otherwise be letting 
go by. In 2016, a 950 kilowatt hour SAFT lithium ion battery and a 1.2 megawatt ABB inverter were installed, helping the utility use more of the wind's energy. Energy storage has been desired for years in terms of trying to integrate renewables more efficiently. The lithium ion battery technology has really changed the situation in terms of making energy storage viable. Battery is essentially like a spinning reserve so that we can operate smaller diesel generation and a lot more wind. The, the battery has been instrumental in providing reliable power to the community, but also burning less and less diesel fuel. There is potential in the future, with additional wind turbines, to be able to switch off the diesel engines for periods of time. This will allow even more of the utility's energy to come from the wind.